Hey everyone. I finished up the install of the 2R3E solution this morning and I was able to get a little bit of seat time uh, just, just to move the loader up and down, do a couple uh, passes with two functions and it really works awesome. I'm excited about this, but I don't yet have very much real world experience. That will come tomorrow. Now, I've also done the filming of the install, but it is not yet available. Now, by the time most of you watch this, it will be available. But if you're seeing this uh, as it's released, the install video isn't uh, yet out. Now, it must be out this weekend because I am shipping pumps uh, on Monday. Uh, for all the pre-orders uh, that were out there, you will have your solution by the weekend. And if you um, grab it, depending on exactly where you are, you will likely have it installed by the weekend and you can have uh, much more flow to your 2R or 3E solution. Now, um, I did take the tractor out, warmed it up so that I can do these flow meter readings. Um, and we're gonna see what we get in theory at 2650, which is about what the RPMs are on this tractor at wide open throttle. 10.2 is what we should get. Uh, what, what we sh what we can get, let me put it that way. I'll choose my words carefully. Uh, there should be some slippage. There's always uh, that's always the case. So if the pump is manufactured to exactly the specifications, then 10.2 should be all that we can get, and it should be at least a little bit less than that. Um, I will tell you, I've had this pump or this flow meter on a number of tractors. There are situations where it goes above. Uh, there are situations that it goes below and there are situations that it's right on and you know I can't really account for that and I don't think it's necessary that we get down to those nitty-gritty details uh, I think directionally it's right I think it's actually very close um, but you know uh, what this tells us is if you have something that you know needs to run seven gallons per minute uh, assuming we get these numbers uh, the numbers that we expect, then you're going to be able to run it. If it's 10 gallons a minute, it's probably going to be close because really all we can achieve is 10.2. And um, if it's 16 gallons a minute, you know, you're probably going to fall short. Now, I haven't seen these numbers yet. Uh, I've just put this flow meter on and I've looped it up here in this goofy fashion, but I did want to put it here with the RPM gauge so that we could see RPMs and flow at the same time. And it, seem, it might seem like it would be easy to kind of affix this in a different way, but it's really clunky to work with. I'm just going to lay it here. We're going to run these numbers and see what we get. So you can see we're at operating temperature. Or I actually haven't measured the temperature, but the tractor's been running a bit, and I've been using the loader, so I do expect that it's operating temperature. We're staying just above four gallons a minute at idle, which is 950 to 1,000 RPMs. Let's jump up in roughly 500 RPM increments. 1,500, we'll see almost six and a half. A little more than six and a quarter, but not quite six and a half. So at wide open throttle 2650, it looks like right at 10, maybe just a bit more than 10. I mean, if you look at the the way the gauge is, the, the indicator mark is basically, um, it, it, there's only like two or three, you know, or the ticks between are only about two or three times wider than indicator mark. So uh, I think you've seen it, Tractor Time with Tim has mentioned it with the other, other uh, flow meter from Kenny is the granularity on these things isn't very good. And you know, for this style uh, flow meter, 
makes a little bit of sense, I would say, because uh, the if you had more granularity, you'd have to have a much larger uh, flow meter, and that probably doesn't make sense in most cases. But all that to say, that really passes the sniff test. We thought we'd get somewhere around 10.2. Um, we're at 10, maybe 10.1 you know, maybe 9.8, because I, I don't know that this uh, flow meter is, is really that accurate. Um, it also is based on the RPM gauge being accurate. And I would not be surprised if somebody told me that the RPM gauge is only accurate to 50 RPMs. Uh, and that makes, a, you know, that makes a difference if you're getting down into the tenths of a gallon per minute, but that's not important. The important part is like, is what the tractor can do, right? And uh, I promise you, and I've only had a few minutes on this, uh, this will wake your uh, 2R and 3E series tractor up. You will be very happy with the performance. I'm confident of that. We'll see what the backhoe does. Um, I think that that's going to be a, a big winner, especially being able to use it at lower RPMs. If you recall here, at 1500 RPMs, we were getting as much or more than wide open throttle uh, on a stock tractor. So you've got somewhere in the neighborhood of like 1200 RPMs more flow if you so choose than what you had originally. Um, that gives you a lot more flexibility and that's really what Hydros Plus is about, is about giving the power to the driver to do whatever it is they wanna do. And if that is uh, increase your RPMs and run a lot more flow, uh, to do other jobs, definitely do that. If not, you can pull the RPMs back and run just like you always did before. You obviously have a variable uh, valve here that gives you the capability to give just a little bit or a lot, right? So um, I think that's the important part for me that it, when I ask the tractor to do something, it does it, uh, whether it's a little bit or a lot. So hope this was exciting. It's very exciting for me more videos to come so if you haven't done it already definitely consider subscribing um, if you have questions you can either send me an email at kevin at hydrosplus.com or leave them below uh, i will definitely respond to all questions um, that you leave in the comment section so really appreciate you watching and uh, if you haven't already and you're interested head over to hydrosplus.com